Hey love and welcome back to another video. This is part two of us talking about breakage and shedding. I'm going to talk about breakage, but breakage on your locks and breakage at the end of your locks, the ends, okay? So if you have not seen the previous video about breakage, the difference between breakage and thinning, not thinning, breakage and shedding, go watch it after this video. Don't mess with my algorithm now. After this video, go and watch the next video, okay? In this video, we're talking about why your ends are breaking off in your locks, okay? Hey, I am Pauline, your virtual lock educator and lock business mentor. If you're looking for any type of lock tips or you are looking to grow your business, check out the links in my description. I got you. This is probably for people who've been locked a long time. Now, if you've been locked, you know, not for a long time, you can watch, you still watch this because you're gonna, you're gonna get tips that's going to help you with future, you know, at least know, know what to do in the future, okay? So, breakage at the, at the ends of your lock. Typically, I see this with people who've been locked seven plus years. They've been locked a long time, so their hair is like mid-back, waist length, tail butt length, tailbone length, thigh length. I mean, they got the inches, okay? They inching, all right? So they got all that going on and I get the question all the time, why are my ends breaking? In the last video, we talked about shedding and breakage. So when your hair sheds in the lock, your hair is shedding from root, from the root. So the whole strand of hair is falling out and it's falling out in the lock, okay? Now, once that hair falls out in the lock, it, stay, it stays there, but you're also shampooing your hair. You're probably at the beach. You're probably in the pool. So you're doing all of that stuff. So your hair gets wet. When it gets wet, your hair expands a little bit because anytime your strands of hair gets wet, it swells. It swells a little bit, right? So your strands are swelling within the lock. So when it swells, it makes room. When it makes room, you have the loose strands, the strands that have shedded, in your lock, you know, you lose about 80 to 100 strands a day, okay? That's just the natural um, pattern of hair. Um, our hair goes through three different phases, okay? So you have a phase where it sheds. So it sheds in the lock, the whole strand. And so when your hair gets wet, it wiggles. That loose strand does not, does not have anything to hold it in place, but the interlocking pattern, right? So that strand wiggles this way. And in like seven years, that strand is been moving. That strand been making movements, right? So now you've been locked seven years. Now, keep in mind, your hair, the first stage of the growth cycle is the antigen phase. And that phase is from five to seven years. Your hair can grow up to five to seven years before entering the ne next stage, okay? So five, you get five to seven years of growth before that strand said, okay, bye-bye, I've done my job, I'm good, peace out, okay? So now this strand is saying peace out and it's entering the next phase and then the phase of falling out, right? So this strands fall, strand fall out. So that's why I said, if you've been locked five to seven years, you're going to start experiencing breakage at the end of your locks because it's a natural process, y'all. It's a natural process. <laughs> your hair is going through the growth cycle. And so some people will experience it more in their, some people will experience it more or less than some others, right? Because one, we're working with different patterns. So not everyone's using the same locking pattern to ensure that that shedded strand is staying in the lock, right? Not everyone, some people palm roll, um, not everyone has the same maintenance. Not everyone style their hair the same way. Not everyone shampoo their hair as often. Everybody's on a different routine. Um, everyone is on doing different things in their lock journey, right? So of course your experience, if you're looking at somebody who's been locked, if you're looking at your lock twin, hey twin, we both been locked seven years and you're like, oh, my hair shedding. Why are yours not shedding? My ends are breaking. Why aren't, you, why aren't your ends breaking? Stop worrying about your neighbor. Stop worrying about your twin. Don't worry about your lock twin because 
For seven years, I doubt y'all had the same process, okay? For seven years, I doubt y'all been doing the same, y'all been experiencing the same hormonal journey. Y'all been experiencing, y'all probably don't even have the same lactation. Y'all probably have not been doing, some of y'all colored in between, some been styling and doing different things. So it's in seven, five to seven years, a lot can happen. So please do not compare your journey with somebody else because in those five to seven years, I promise you, y'all journey was not the same, okay? So that shedding that you're, after that five to seven years, that hair is shedding. That, that hair um, is letting go of you, okay? So the hair sheds, and then if it wiggles its way down, eventually there's some separation that happens. You know how when you are a loose natural, you shed or you have split ends or different things like that? Our locks experience certain things too. And so that your hair at 10, 10 years or seven years or 15 years and you're experiencing like you're losing three inches on your ends or something like that, that's normal. That will happen. And that is why it's happening. That's why I wanted to give you a little background because that is why it's happening to your locks because of the natural hair cycle in play, okay? So when you see that your hair is growing, it's just not retaining its normal length because of the shedding process. And when you've been locked a long time, your ends start to um, a break off. And it's not always going to be, oh, it's just breaking, uh, it's just falling off randomly. It's the different things you're doing to it that's going to help it to shed naturally. Because sometimes even when I'm retying somebody's hair, it's sh the ends are shedding in, in the retying process and it's normal. Please don't ask me to pick up that three inch or two inch piece of hair and reattach it. It's a natural shedding process, okay? <laughs> don't have your lactation going crazy because you're like, oh, oh, oh. Can, can you please reattach this, this little piece of hair right here? So just think about the shedding process of your hair. Just think about it. just like as older as people get older, they get weaker. The older you your hair gets, the weaker it gets. Okay, especially when that shedded hair is not attached to your um, scalp. That thing has no life. It has no um, no life pumping through it. It is disconnected from the bulb. The it. That's it. That's it. So just just, just let let it go. Let it go if it's letting you go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Think about it. The longer your hair is the um old the hair at the end is the weakest why is it the weakest because one it's it's hair that's no longer um that may not uh, be attached to your scalp <laughs> anymore right and then that's the um that the ends of your hair has been around longer so it's experienced more trauma than the newer you know the the hair closer to your root the hair at the end has probably experienced more trauma, has been in the environment a lot longer. Some of y'all color y'all hair probably has more chemical process than um, the hair at the root. Sad to say the ends of your hair get the less, the least amount of care and love. Y'all don't be loving on them ends like y'all be loving on the roots. We're going to get into that. When I'm talking, talking about environmental causes for why your ends are breaking, it is your hair getting trapped under your armpit. That's stress over time. Y'all with long hair. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I used to have long hair. I know y'all see me rocking this short hair and you feel like I don't know what I'm talking about. Why are you talking about us long hair? I don't care, girlies. I used to have long hair. I think the longest I had was my waist length. Yeah, waist length, okay? I believe so. Mm -hmm. So I remember it get, you know, when you put on your purse, it get trapped underneath your purse and you're like pulling. You putting on, you're doing something, it get trapped underneath your armpit. You putting on clothes, it get trapped in the clothes. You're zipping something up, it gets trapped in the zipper. Um, different things. Some of y'all close y'all hair in the door. I know somebody who clo closed their do uh, uh, hair in the oven because it was so long. So when she went to go bend down to close the oven door, the hair, you know, fell forward and got closed in the, like, our hair, the longer it is, the ends, because y'all typically don't feel y'all hair past y'all shoulders. So the ends get, get the most abuse. So because of that, you're adding more trauma and, and your environment is increasing or um, is propelling how quickly, increasing the rate that your hair will break, okay? So I know I've been talking about all the reasons why your hair can break and wow, wow, wow. Oh my goodness, Pauline, do you have any type of good news? Of course I do, of course, because y'all know. 
I got you. So if you have um, long hair in your, um, there is, you can't control the, the, the age of your hair, okay? These ends, if they old, they old, okay? Because they've been around longer. But you can control how you care for your hair. So one, be mindful of your surroundings. Like, be mindful of where your hair is. Some of y'all just have long hair and y'all just be moving, doing this, doing that, and it's closing. Ooh, ooh, get stuck. And you be mindful. Like, you know you're about to put your purse on and your hair is past your shoulders. Do this. Move it. Put your purse on and then you're good to go. You know you're about to put on your shirt or the jacket or something and you're not trying to get your hair stuck. Put it in a bun or put it up and then put your jacket on, put your clothes on, and then you can let your hair down. Okay? Um, so there are different things you can do to... Um, manage the uh, stress that we put on the ends of our hair. So be mindful of the placement of your hair. Also, um, give your ends more love. Y'all be shampooing y'all hair and y'all focus on the scalp. Listen, if you're going to have long hair, you cannot afford to be lazy with your hair, okay? So if you're deciding to have long hair, take care of the whole length of your hair, okay? So when you're shampooing your hair, don't just focus on your scalp, and then about this much of the hair, and then you forget about the ends. Like the ends need some loving too, okay? So when you shampoo your hair, shampoo the whole thing. Start with your scalp, and then shampoo the middle, shampoo the ends, make sure you're getting all of it. Because if you're not, your hair is in the environment day in and day out. Your hair, you're putting products on it day in and day out. When there's stuff in your hair, and it's not being removed, and it's just become... Um, it is, is like marrying into your lock. It's suffocating your hair and eventually it's going to create breakage. So make sure you're really cleaning your hair from root to ends, okay? And then when you condition your hair, don't forget about your ends. Some of y'all, and then that's it. And then your ends didn't get no loving. Take your hair. That's something I do with my clients all the time. I spray, 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 spray. And then I take the ends, I bring them together and I spray them. Spray, 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 spray. Just to make sure I am conditioning the ends. I am adding moisture to the ends. You can even do um, treatment um, for your ends. You know, there's so many different things you can do. So make sure you're taking care of the ends of your hair. Oh, Lord, y'all know I am dedicated to y'all because the power that went out while I'm recording my video and giving you guys this good information, the power that went out. So I'm over here using my... Um, Cell phone, well, should I have my other cell phone to get flashlight? But that's fine. I think this will work. You guys can still see me. Let's let's see. Okay. I am trying to make sure to get this information to y'all because baby, keep your ends moisturized. Um, if you need something that's already pre-made for you, I have my leave-in conditioner, the cocoa almond leave-in conditioner. You take it, spray your ends to really keep your um ends moisturized, okay? Another thing, this is key. Do not over manipulate your ends. Y'all, some of y'all just have that hand and hair syndrome going on. So y'all over manipulate your hair. Don't over manipulate your hair because this, some of y'all do this to the ends of your hair and then wondering why there's breakage on the ends. You're stressing it out. You're doing too much. Who wants to be pulled on all the time? Y'all be doing this. Y'all sitting there twirling, 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 twirling away. And then you're breaking your ends away. So Try not to over manipulate your hair. I know some of y'all love, um, oh, it's starting to light. Oh, the thunder. Let me hurry up. Um, some of y'all starting to, um, yeah, stop, just stop playing with your hair, right? Stop playing with your hair. Light, I don't, I'm using my computer for light as well. <laughs> don't go away, light. So don't um, over manipulate your hair. Keep your hands out your hair and leave them in alone. Let them be, okay? They gonna eventually go, but let them go in peace. Please let them go in peace, okay? Don't send them to their grave early. When you go to bed, make sure you are using a satin bonnet or a satin pillowcase, okay? Just so that your ends are not drying out so much um, and you're giving yourself extra work to do because the drier your ends are, the more work you're going to have to do to keep them moisturized. And so you don't want to moisturize it and then put your, put your hair on a cotton pillow or... Um, cotton pillowcase or a, a cotton do-rag or whatever, you're undoing what you've done. So that stuff dries the hair out. So use a satin bonnet or a satin pillowcase to um, keep the moisture in your locks, okay? This is another thing I want you guys to be mindful of. When you're detangling your hair, be gentle with your locks, okay? Be gentle when you're detangling. Um, go through, you know, do this. You Do this. 
some of y'all be <laughs> and then because the longer your hair is the more it's going to tangle it tangles easily so when you're detangling or running your fingers through be gentle be gentle be gentle be gentle because the ends will have you um if you're too rough and you're not being gentle during the detangling process, you're constantly running your fingers through your hair trying to detangle and you're being rough, it is going to accelerate the breakage. Okay. Last but not least, I know y'all may not like this, but this is my own professional opinion, is trim your ends, okay? You don't have to trim your ends as often as someone who is loose natural, but it's okay to trim your ends. You can either have a scheduled trim or you can let your hair trim itself naturally, and it will. It will, but when your hair trims itself naturally, you're gonna end up with uneven lengths and it's gonna look jagged. And yeah, so if you want a more even, um, consistent looking length, go ahead and schedule trimmings for your hair. And since the hair is going through the growth cycle every five to seven years, it's in the antigen phase, the growth phase. After seven years, just go ahead and trim about three to four inches off, it, and it'll be okay. It will be okay. This is for people who have long hair. Like once your hair is past waist length, it's okay to give it a scheduled trimming just to remove the dead hair that is already loose and that is going to eventually separate itself from you. Now, because we are locked, um, you have, um, it is more intertwined with the hair that's already attached, that's attached to your scalp. So it's not like it's going to just fall away like that. It can last longer, but with over manipulation, color, and all the ex excess stuff that y'all do to y'all locks to cause more damage, you're accelerating the breakage process. Y'all hair could really go longer um, than seven years without any breakage, but y'all be doing too much. Y'all do too much, so therefore, you, you're accelerating the process. But you know, if you're somebody who just let your hair be, your hair's up most of the time, you're protecting your ends, you're keeping it moisturized, you're doing all that stuff, you might need to, you might not need to trim until, you know, every 10, 15 years. Depends on how long you like to keep your hair, okay? So I hope this was helpful for people who've been wondering why are my, why, why are the ends um breaking off? What is this loctician doing to my hair? They don't know what they're doing because they're breaking my hair off. It's not them. It's the natural process of the, um, hair cycle, okay? So if you have any questions, put in the comments. Let's continue this conversation below. If y'all want a part three, I don't know what a part three would be about breakage, but if y'all want a part three or something, let me know. We will go, I, I, I guess I can do a part three answering the questions that you guys have in the comments. But if you found this helpful, please share, like, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Yeah, and that's it. Let me go get out this dark. I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna go do now. Ciao, boo. I